Hey guys, Thunder E here and the king is back. I'm talking about the ROG Phone 3 and welcome to my review of this device. As we've been waiting for this device, this thing is a behemoth of a gaming device. And you know, we love gaming devices on this channel. So the ROG Phone 3 packs in a lot of features. And when you look at it just side by side to the ROG Phone 2, it looks kind of similar, except for a few design accents and of course the camera array at the back. Plus the ROG Phone 2 does have a headphone jack. The ROG Phone 3 does not have a headphone jack. Uh, but the cameras are nice, 64 megapixels, 8K recording, we'll get to that because we care about what's under the hood. And under the hood, we have a Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. Yes, Plus, Plus, the new one. The new one that Qualcomm just mentioned, uh, which means better performance than the 865. And we, it's also coupled with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is uh, what I have in this device. It starts from eight, it moves all the way to 16. Now, this is also coupled with 512 gigabytes of storage and max, which is what I also have. And we have a 6,000 milliamp battery. You're going, wow. How long does that take to charge? Well, an hour and 45 minutes or so. Uh, and that's using the 30 watt charger that comes with it. And I will say this though, it takes about an hour and uh, maybe 10 minutes to charge all the way to about 89, 90%. So the last 10% really trickle charges you on this device, just something that happens. But anyway, besides that, what else do we have in this device? The display, 6.59 inches. It's a, no, it's not a 60, it's not a 90. It's done at 120, it's a 144 hertz display, which is amazing. Plus that's coupled with 270 hertz touch sampling, which means smoother actions while you're gaming, just your thumb is sliding around on the screen. And we'll see how that performs. It's also a pretty bright display and we've got stereo speakers. So without wasting any more time, let's take a quick look at some of the games we'll be discussing as we discuss this device. So some quick game, gameplay clips for you. All right, so as you know, I had to start off with Call of Duty Mobile because I play a lot of COD, Warzone, Call of Duty Mobile is my go-to on a mobile device. And the first thing I'll tell you is that it runs well. On the max setting, it runs really smooth. You can see uh, through Game Genie there that uh, our frame rates were about 60 frames per second, um, temperatures were about 39, and we're running the X mode, which means it is at the highest clock speed we can do on this device. So 
You also saw that I was using triggers while gaming, and that is something you can do with this, of course, with the air triggers set up on the right-hand side of the device, which make it pretty easy and great. Now, moving over to PUBG. PUBG also taking advantage of those air triggers and also looking at it and running this game at its max game setting, extreme HDR. Uh, this thing ran really well. I mean, again, that touch sampling, 270 hertz, it's great. It is absolutely fantastic. You need that. I wouldn't say you necessarily need that, but it just it makes a great experience for you while gaming. Now, temperatures for PUBG ran much higher at 42 degrees, maybe 43. Again, we're running at a much higher setting here, um, but it still ran well. And also those temperatures were gauged and matched with my own uh, thermometer gun, uh, right, which basically measured both PUBG and Call of Duty mode between 39 and 42. So that's something, of course, to take note. Now, when we move over to a different type of game called Dan the Man, which is a side-scroller action adventure, uh, of course, it's not gonna use as much in terms of performance, but it, you can clearly see how the 144 hertz and the touch sampling come to play, giving you really smooth, fast gameplay, very quick. But you're saying, Thunder E, that's great. What about games that hit 120 frames per second, 144? Well, I've got a few for you. First was the 1945, um, uh, Air Force uh, game, which actually played pretty well. It's a top-down shooter, really fast, but again, it's not a graphics powerhouse, and it did 144 frames per second, which is great. But Vainglory came to the rescue, and this game, of course, is a graphical masterpiece. It takes in a lot of uh, um, performance, but also ran at 144 frames per second, so this system can run the things you want to quite well, and quite effectively. Now, this is also coupled with the software that makes your gaming experience better. And I think for any gaming phone, that is probably one of the most important things. So one of the first softwares you always want to check out is the Game Crate. Game Crate is a piece of software that allows you to go through your game library and you know, that's something that's normal, but you can launch your games directly. You can also set up scenarios for your game. So you can clean the memory. You can set up the performance you want that game to run at, the display, touch sensitivity, uh, refresh rate, all those things. You go for every single game you want to, so you could do that. But you also have your console section where you can go into X mode or turn off X mode, and X mode basically overclocks your CPU or basically max out your CPU clock speed. You can clean out your RAM, you can change your fan speed for the fan that you use while gaming, also the lighting effects and all that stuff. And speaking of that fan, um, we've got a, a fan uh, that comes with the RG Phone 3, which came with the RG Phone 2 as well. Now, that's pretty cool because you can connect it to the side USB ports. This, uh, the device has two USB ports, one on the side, one on the bottom, and, one, and another one on the side. And that USB port connects uh, to give you an external fan to cool your system. I will say the fan was able to drop temperatures about three or four degrees, but I was a bit disappointed it was, didn't drop temperatures as much as I experienced with the ROG Phone 2. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but I think that's something that'd be changed with changing the fan uh, um, revolutions, and that's pretty much that. But with the fan, you do have an extra headphone jack, which is missing on this device, so you do have the ability to use headphones if you're using the fan of the ROG Phone 3. Now, the other piece of software is the Game Genie. And the reason I like the Game Genie is because this allows you to go and customize your software while you're gaming. So it allows you to see, of course, things like your frames per second, uh, your temperatures, but you can go in and customize your air triggers. And the air triggers are really important because we use them for games like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile. And it's easy to actually set those up. You can customize macros, you can record gameplay, you can clip gameplay. There's so many things you can do directly by just swiping from left to right with that. So a lot of those features work well and I'm really impressed, but you're going, Thunder E, what about audio? We heard gameplay audio was good, but how are the speakers? Well, take a quick listen. So the speakers are good. They're really good. They're loud, they're boomy. Um, you know, you've got a built-in EQ as well where you can customize that. You can change the bass, the treble, uh, all the different settings in the EQ. You've got different customization. So you've got a lot of things to do there, giving you some really clean sound. I think uh, this is an overall solid gaming package, but as a phone, you still have cameras. 
And what do those cameras do? They actually do a decent job. You've got a 64 megapixel rear camera that shoots at 8K and 8K video is pretty good. I was quite impressed. But it also takes some really good photos in daytime. Um, it also takes some really good portrait photos with the rear, with the rear camera as well. Um, and also takes some decent nighttime photos as well. So you've got an array there. And the front facing camera at 32 megapixels does a good job in capturing um, really solid photos and also um, doing some good portrait shots as well. So. As a gaming phone, this is like a good bang for your buck all around in terms of just performance and also extra features. Uh, the 144 hertz display is really nice, really smooth motion while just running around the uh, the OS. You can set it on 144, you can drop it down to 60, you can set it on auto, so it actually just uh, maximizes your battery life. And battery life on this is really nice. If you are running at 144 hertz and you are gaming, you will still be able to use this phone for a whole day. That's pretty cool. 144, 144 hertz on the display is not an easy thing to do. Uh, so I was quite impressed with the battery life on this thing. Um, I would say yes, some gaming, not extensive gaming uh, on that note. But the battery life is truly impressive. And with everything that's coupled together, I think a lot of people will like what this device brings to the table. Now, I will say though, in terms of cost, um, I don't have the American pricing for you. I do have the British pricing, and I can tell you that it starts off with the ROG Phone 3 Strig Edition, with his, which is the 865, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, at 799 pounds, and goes all the way up to the ROG Phone 3 with the 865 Plus, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, at 1,099 pounds. So. US pricing will come and it most likely will differ, uh, but that's where the phone lands, at least in the pricing that I know. So if you have any questions or any comments about this device, if you want to know more, let me know. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Leave your thoughts. What do you think about the ROG Phone 3? Is this what you were looking for in the gaming phone? Are you excited about it? Or what do you, would you like to know? Just leave your questions, guys. Otherwise, thank you very much and always enjoy your entertainment.